Okay, here's an object. It's not an oopart or anything like that necessarily, but it has its oddity in its own, for it's known as the magic sphere of Helios, or later would be Saul Invictus, or people would know it as Mithraic type of symbolism. We've talked about a lot of other videos, and this near perfect sphere here that's shown is it's pretty damn huge. It's in the museum in Athens. And what you see here, well, on the side of the disc over there, I, I guess, close to the fire extinguisher, which is conspiracy, conspicuously near a whole bunch of stone artifacts, but apparently due to OSHA regulations, you got to have them a certain point and everything. But anyhow, on here you can see that that face that's over here on the right-hand side, like there, is kind of all rubbed off. In fact, they say that all these gladiators used it at one time, but you can see on the left side there a tentacle of what would be an octopus or perhaps the kraken in the world sea of the sphere that's going on. And you can even see the little spheres and circles that have been impregnated onto it, which would be like the suckers on the tentacle that's going there. But this is a magical sphere of Helios. So let's look into this a little farther. So it's on exhibit here and of course a lot of people can say well the easy reason to say that it's of Helios here is that it has this crest on top of it that a lot of people would say it's a lot like the halo of course and I've showed you connections with that of Jesus and Saul Invictus and how that all goes together and the sun god that gets reborn right about Christmas which is coming up in a while depending on when you're watching this but there's symbolism next to him too on the ground and it still has that almost master of beast bringer of light situation with the two on the side but we'll look at that a little closer for there's a lot of things that are around on this and why is it called magical? Well, let's get into that. Not only did gladiators think that it brought them luck, but over here in certain places, there are certain runes that are etched onto here, and people have looked at them and said, hey, that's like ancient Phoenician, and of course there's ancient Greek and stuff. Now the timing they give for this thing is about 200 A.D., give or fold a few years in there, of decades. And because... Where it's found, and I'll show you a picture of it here, is this temple of Dionysus as a theater hooked up with it. It's not far from there, so it's been taken from there. And there are other pictures, of course, shown here, showing stuff that would have been back from the Greek age of a little older, and of course that other linguistics are. So perhaps they're showing symbolism and even some things that are in more of the ancient language that some people still may have, and others, and right here we have a bunch of rings all hooked together and the innocent thought that came to my mind the first time I saw pictures of this thing all around it was well, that's like the Olympics but that's also a series of Vesica Pisces that goes on and then there's counts and calendars and symbolism and what part of the magic situation here is some of these symbols are shown to have to do with alchemy and things like that to go off of it. There's a few symbols on this thing that actually show up in ancient witchcraft well, over a thousand years later and pop up there again. So it definitely has something like this and you see the circle form that's cut on the end of it and it looks almost perfect but not perfect. Now those circles that are cut in there look like they were scribed in using a device and then chipped off into it and then a larger one but I don't know if you can notice here but the series of rings that go on were normally the same size going across the arc of this ball or sphere that's there but that ring that goes around it and the whole thing and edging on us here is really a little bit warped well in fact the whole ball is warped just a little bit and because of that it uh, has an effect that's not quite a sphere and I haven't verified this with sizing or anything let me see if I can get this a little better here 
and verified this with sizing or anything myself. That might be better. But the difference of the height with the width and everything is supposed to be something like the Earth or the weight. A long time ago when they had figured out the Earth is actually a little bit flattened and wider in the center and stuff. And you can see it on ancient maps where they exaggerate it in this concept that you still see in atlases today. I could go off about something and let's just continue with that. They said that this ringing that goes on here has to do with that. And that there are signs and symbols on here that talk about poles and east and west and all these things that are on this sphere like the earth and so on. This has got to do with magic. A bunch of gladiators usually just rub it for luck before they go in for their gladiator ceremonies. That's the thing that's hooked up with it. You can look it up. I don't know. There might be a new wiki article on it. There's been so more. So it was found in this temple of Dionysus, right? And there are all these ceremonies that go along with this. In fact, with it, there's, we're going to have a hard time loading the next picture. Don't do this to me. Oh, damn me, don't do this to me. Yeah, clear it out. We're going to try to run a commercial. So again, there's that temple of Dionysus set, and yeah, it couldn't hold, couldn't run the next picture here for some reason. So, I don't know if you saw it there. So there's this gladiator ceremonies, and you can tell it was also run for a theater and all these other things at one time, and they figured out it must have had benches and extra things hooked all up to it like this. But let's see if we can catch it at that second a minute ago instead of stalling like it did a minute ago. I apologize, but so we see the sphere at the bottom of this. Hopefully it's showing up pretty well here, and there's a triangle that's on that too. Now here we are going back to Pythagorean type crap and everything else, and someone said, and I don't again have a very far way of doing this, but you see how these metal poles are stuck up in the bottom of it. I hope you can see this here in the very far left-hand side and it stops short in fact you can even see the line running up here that meets it to make this triangle right this is kind of on the arc here's the egg shape if you will the sphere that's a little wider than and we're kind of looking up at the butt of it where it's speared on the ground or just off the ground so somebody said that amount that it's short and the fact that it's got this sacred triangle situation and what it would go in relation to the circle inside the square of the circle inside a triangle da 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 like we talked about in sacred geometry would be the fact of the difference of that making that circle and that circle ironically on this atlasy globe looking sphere situation actually is kind of like the bottom of it in the first place and that would be also the amount that the earth wobbles and that's supposed to equal to the 23 degrees or whatever exactly that and that's supposed to be exact close on to it of the that's what that variation would be and there's all this writing here that goes along to it and some of them from slightly different eras too. So they try to put it at 200, but a lot of the writing goes from way back below that and this ancient Phoenician forms and everything that they had even too. But then they say, well, because there's older writing on it here and here, that makes the whole thing this of age. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe some of that's a little bit later. You know, we found in Egyptian tombs where these guys put them in and they put their initials and stuff and that has nothing to do with the ancients and stuff. And then we could be talking about graffiti-ish things that got put on by people later and stuff. And maybe they were trying to add to it. 
in some way. Here's a squared off window pane, all X'd out situation going on. So this thing's got all kinds of magic hooked up with it. And we talked about magic and it's corresponded to sacred geometry and the things that were kept and all that that goes on to the way things were. And of course they hook it up to uh, gladiators and the reason it's so decayed, it's not really the time that it has of age, but yet that it had been rubbed on by these gladiators coming here. There's finally a good picture, if you will. And so we're looking at what you might know, depending on wherever time it is. This is Sol Invictus, or the sun god Helios. And it has this depiction on We'll be able to look it up a little closer. And you can see this archway and things. And this symbolism, which I've shown you, is connected all the way through to our modern religions and where it all came from with a lot of other videos. And I'm not going to try to get into long-winded form about it just yet, but... Let's look at some oddities here that's along with this magic place for, you know, this is supposed to connect to the ancient gods and Helios and so on situation. And so you look at it and man, it just went out of like high definition for some reason. Or maybe we're just close in on it. So here's the sun god, and you can see this master of beast symbology again, but what looks a little odd is you know by now the Greeks are able to really do something nice, and that's another way they said, well, there's all this erosion on it. So if this place does plays and all that, how much was it out in the weather and all this type of things? Did people roll it around a whole bunch? Well, they can see where the patina, where it was up and it was down, it looks like that goes for a long time. You can see there's not really that much patina here on this side, but the other side there was. <coughs> Near the tentacle and so on, but it's cracked up and little pieces are missing. It's not really missing for here, and so the answer would have been, no, nah, not so much. Well, they really knew how to draw, so this one on the right, and they don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but most people think it's a lion. Some say it could be a dog because it doesn't have that big of a mane. But of course it doesn't have a snout of a dog necessarily either, does it? Looks like it's tilting up and so that's a lion. And that would be real common to go along with it. But on the left hand side, there's a little baby T-Rex from the Dinosaurs show from back in the 80s. You all see in this? And of course it looks kind of like he either has a mohawk are behind them or some kind of primitive plants. And you're like, what? And I remember some getting pointed out before, and of course, these guys try to say, people walk with the dinosaurs and all this stuff go on, and there's footprints. And of course, in Texas, not where I, too far from where I live, there are dinosaur tracks with human tracks running through them and stuff. And so they uh, have tried to make all kinds of connections, but there's just one kind of like, what? You know, because one looks like you can really pretty much make out for sure the legs and everything going on. The other one, if you did the same in your mind and you look at it, that's like, well, he's kind of this way with his head turned. And that uh, you're trying to go with that one's a dog because if they how come they can do all this other stuff? And it looks like they're easily identifiable. And over here, it's like, what? And in a modern day, we can only interpret that as looking like. Well, it, 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 I wouldn't even go with dog. It looks like a dinosaur. There, it finally showed it. So, some of these symbols, though, that are on the side of it that go with this alchemy and stuff is later shown with witchcraft and things like that. And here's the tentacle again. So, you can see that heavy patina that's on a good portion of this thing and the other portion where it's not necessarily on it. People tried to make a connection and, hey, this right, that's an Egyptian monolith type thing that's on there with this bulb thing on top of it. Of course, here we go with that sacred geometry and points and things like that. And goes along with music, too, that I've shown you just to the left of that. There's that circle on the bottom and I go, hey, that's an Audi symbol. Yeah, that's the reason it's got to do with the whole thing. Maybe I could do a whole video about that, but Vesica Pisces for sure, and then you make the connections. Of course, going through the four seasons and going through all of that, but then the Olympics, and it looks a lot like the Olympic symbol, even though they kind of stagger it up and down. 
They say there's a reason for that. So this is the magic sphere of Helios. From this point, it looks pretty much spherical. You get on the other side, and it looks a little bit egg-shaped. And people said, well, if they could make it all these things like that, they did that for a reason, too. And the strangeness of that, along with the 23-degree wobble and everything else, is a lot like we had the world figured out until a lot more modern time. Whenever, Even on old maps, it kind of shows that degree of radiant into it. I haven't verified those numbers, but it's pretty wicked. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. We'll get on to another one. And let me know what y'all think down in the comments there about this. And do you think it comes from 200 AD or 200 BC? Because, hell, some of that stuff that's written on there would have been six or 800 BC. Yeah, and a connection with an Atlas-type situation where they were talking about would put it at that too, and Omphalos of the days, and things like that, like the one at Delphi. Peace.